Today, I will be comparing four high-end gaming laptops from Acer and Asus, as well as two generations of NVIDIA RTX graphics cards, ranging from an RTX 2060 to the latest RTX 3070. All four laptops are designed with the same power limit at 115 watts, making this a relatively fair comparison. When it comes to gaming laptops, the primary factor that will determine the performance in games would be the power limit. CPUs also have some minor effect as you will see later in the video. All CPUs have at least 6 cores with high single core boost clock frequency to minimize the CPU bottleneck as much as possible. All four laptops also have at least 16 gigabytes of memory, all running in dual channel. If you are interested to see the reviews of each individual laptop, I will leave links in the descriptions below. The games I have selected vary from action RPGs to real-time strategy games, and I have also tested shooters as well as racing games. This is to include as big variety of games as possible for a more realistic scenario. All games are tested with the highest settings, usually Ultra, with VSync turned off. Drivers were updated to the latest version, and all games were tested at 1080p. All the laptops have a turbo mode, and I have tested all games with the laptop's turbo mode enabled. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is an action RPG. This game is quite demanding on the hardware, and it is also a good game to benchmark as it typically shows a linear gain between each GPU tier. The RTX 2070 scored around 9% higher than the RTX 2060, while the Super version of the 2070 was a good 10% better versus its predecessor. Not surprisingly, the RTX 3070 came out on top with an average FPS that was another 9% higher compared to the RTX 2070 Super. Things were slightly different in Batman Arkham Knight. The RTX 2070 was just 6% ahead of RTX 2060 in this title, and RTX 2070 Super was around 12% faster versus the non-Super card. From here, it didn't see a further jump with the RTX 3070, as the average FPS was identical between the RTX 2070 Super and RTX 3070. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided is another game that is heavy on the graphics. In this game, the 2070 was a good 18% faster compared to the 2060, while the 2070 Super was another 10% ahead of 2070. The difference going from 2070 Super to 3070 was 13%. F1 2018 is a fabulous racing game. This is the first title where we can see a diminishing return in terms of value for money. While the 2070 was a good 15% faster versus the 2060, 2070 Super did not see an equally impressive jump over the 2070. The new 3070 was even 3% slower compared to the 2070 Super card. I think this is a case of the Intel CPU having slightly faster single core boost clock. Both the 10875H and the 5900HX are 8 core CPUs, but the Intel CPU can run over 5 GHz, possibly giving it an edge in this game. Far Cry 5 is another CPU bound game and in this title the pattern was the same as F1 2018. Going from 2060 to 2070 saw an 11% jump, while 2070 Super was an average 7% faster compared to 2070. 3070 paired with the AMD CPU was 2% slower than the 2070 Super with the Intel CPU. Back to a graphics heavy title. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an action-adventure game that can take advantage of a high-end GPU. 2070 saw an average of 23% gain over the 2060, 2070 Super was 6% faster than the non-Super version, and RTX 3070 came out on top with a 7% increase over the RTX 2070 Super. 
Last but not least, I also tested a real-time strategy title. Total War, Three Kingdoms. The 2070 was 19% faster than the 2060. 2070 Super 7% faster compared to 2070, and 3070 was yet 10% faster than 2070 Super. In summary, if you bought the previous generation of X70 cards, you really have nothing to worry about if you are playing most of your games on your laptop screen. There is little reason to upgrade over the RTX 20 series in 1080p gaming. Even the 2060 series will yield you great results at ultra settings. The big noticeable difference will be if you are coming from a GTX level graphics card to RTX, or if you are upgrading from a 3 year old gaming laptop. Let me know which GPU you would like to see a comparison of, and what is your favorite card of all time. Let me know in the comments. If you found any of this information to be useful, then a sub to the channel would be massively appreciated. By liking and sharing this video you are making a major contribution in keeping this channel alive. Thanks for watching and see you next time.